how do you experience its relationship with mindfulness? In the last few years, I've really exclusively done intentional therapeutic cannabis use. Even tonight after this, my plan is to do how slow the F down started with my own therapy nights, which is exactly cannabis yoga breath work. And it's no longer just imbibing with cannabis and going about my day. It's saying a prayer and being intentional about how I hope this medicine will help me and get me into my body and provide a wonderful journey during the breath work. And intention is so much in this world. So being able to do that has really supported the, the yoga where you know, I can really get somatic and into my body and work out some energy kinks. And then with that fresh somatic feeling in my body, drop in with the breath work and go on an internal journey uh, with a lot of those obstacles kicked out of the way from the yoga and cannabis helping to, to guide along that path. Doug Finkelstein, who is a community builder, human design manifester, and advocate for personal growth through self-experimentation. What is the purpose of mindfulness from your perspective? These modalities like a cannabis yoga breathwork trilogy feels like a, a vehicle of mindfulness and one of many in the same way that going on a walk a hike and just taking in the smell of the trees and leaves and the beautiful colors of nature is also an, another vehicle of mindfulness. So I think the common thread in it all is this word presence. Having all of your focus and attention on the exact moment that you're living in, in that moment. Our body, our wisdom, our soul is now waiting to be heard. Like when was the last time I turned that, those sensors inward and listened to <laughs> my body and, and what my body uh, feels and has processed and done with that, that information and knowledge. And, and that's, I think, where the wisdom is. And that allows me to then re-enter the world of external stimuli and be more orientated to my higher self and my values and my priorities. What was that experience like? How did slowing down uh, in whatever form it took for you set you up to then move in the direction that you wanted to and actually get things done in the way that you wanted to? I think awareness is so key, just knowing like what even might be helpful. And I think that comes from looking back in your life and realizing what has helped me in the past, um, journaling, art, uh, drawing, talking to a loved one, meditating, yoga, prioritizing time for that wellness. And yes, sometimes like right now, I, I haven't journaled in a few days. Often I'm journaling constantly throughout the day. And I think with the hard practices, as you describe them, like meditation, especially, I know that's one that people are like, it's just a struggle to do, to get on the mat for X amount of minutes every day. How that process works for you. And, you know, kind of it's linked to maybe some of that pleasure and that fun we've been talking about. It's all linked to that pleasure. And it's, a, I think, like an age old question, like, is altruism like possible? Because, you know, if, are you doing it to make yourself feel good about helping others? And like, to me, it doesn't matter. <laughs> like, you know, it, it comes down to, to my values and, and what I value. And for everyone in our community, what we value is being able to show up for the people we care about in our lives and being able to do that as fully as possible. Can you define for our listeners what is meant by human design? It's a combination of astrology, the I Ching, Kabbalah, ancient texts, and planetary alignment. And in short, you put your birth information, location, date, time, into, you can get a free chart, just Google human design chart. And it basically just gives you an entire blueprint about you, your energy, how it works. But the more I learn about it, and there's so much, so many resources and tons of free resources out there. The more I learn about it, the more I connect with other people that have similar energy types or different. I learn about my fiance, about my family's charts, and it just all makes sense. And not only does it make sense, it also helps me relate to them and improve our relationships because I can work with what 
I know to be true about my energy. But how do you kind of walk this line between following your pleasure, following what feels right for you, a, a formal correct way of doing a practice versus incorrect way of doing a practice? And how do you kind of manage that as you're approaching your own practice in your day to day? Discipline is a very challenging practice, like all of these practices as well. So it's something I'm always working with. The human design component, I am what is called a, a splenic manifester, which means my spleen is my decision making center. Uh, the other types are emotional. So emotional people feel through their emotions to come to decisions. There's ego, where people say things out loud and things through with their mind to come to their decisions. Those are the three that come to mind right now. What is a recommendation you would have to just start for someone who wants to start small? What that experience is, is irrelevant. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you're able to find your way to having those experiences when you want them. And when it happens for me, I call it like going from negative 100 to positive 100, where I have experiences like that walk that you took that start out like not great and they end up like, oh my God, this is incredible. I can't even like imagine being in that state <laughs> that I was before. The biggest one for me is the breath. Because if you think of like what's important to human beings, you know, you can't go more than if you haven't just done breath work, you can't go more than a couple seconds without breathing. <laughs> and like it's, I don't know the exact stats off of hand, but it's something like well over half of people do most of their breathing in their chest and their breath doesn't reach their root, which your root is your security. That's, you know, your base that if your breath's not reaching there, then yeah, we're going to feel anxious and rushed and, and insecure at any moment. Just taking one, two, however many you want, feels good. Keep doing it for hours on end. Like take a, a breath that really gets you know, your ribs moving outward. Uh, you can really feel it. Use your diaphragm, the muscle that we all have that is meant for breathing and really just feel that go all the way down to your base. And one of those, you're going to be in better shape than you were before you took that. Two, even better. And, you know, have fun with it. Do it in, until you feel like you're, you are where you want to be. Number two I'd recommend is journaling. For sure. Similarly, we all have pen and paper somewhere. I've got sticky notes everywhere. I've got my journal over there. I just kind of leave it throughout the house. So like anytime I have an inkling, like I should write something down. It's never like, oh, I got to go to the other room and get it. Nah, never mind. Not worth it. It's like, oh, I see it. It's in my eye line. Like, okay. Yeah. Like, how can I not do it now? You now I almost like I'm holding myself accountable. And I always, I've never had a bad time writing something down. Like I always just feel so much better. And then the third thing I want to recommend is this app called One Sec. Have either of you heard of this? Oh, my favorite tool. Uh, I think it's a couple bucks a year. They, they give you the directions on how to do it. It's an app that you can set up for other apps on your phone that makes you take a deep breath when you click to open it. Mm -hmm.